Okay, so everybody can see my screen. You can hear my voice. Yes, doctor. Okay, thank you. So, uh, last week, uh, we have stopped until this example uh, regarding the pre-emphasis and also the emphasis process. Okay. So, as I have uh, explained uh, last week, that uh, pre-emphasis uh, is done in the transmitter. Okay. Uh, before the modulation process. So pre-emphasis means that uh, we increase the amplitude of the signal prior to the modulation process. And de-emphasis uh, is a process happens in the receiver where we reduce the amplitude of the signal after demodulation process. So, uh, uh, when we reduce the amplitude of the signal, we reduce with the same factor that we have increased previously in the transmitter. So, for example, uh, if the signal has been increased for about uh, 10 times, for example, during the pre-emphasis process, that means we need to reduce by factor of 10 uh, after the demodulation process in the receiver. So, kita melakukan... Uh, uh, penambahan dan pengurangan pada kadar yang sama. So, balance. Okay, it is balance. So, uh, the purpose of pre-emphasis and de-emphasis is that we want uh, to uh, to increase uh, the signal-to-noise ratio. Okay, that's the main purpose of uh, pre-emphasis and de-emphasis. So, why we need to do this? Uh, because, uh, as you see in the picture, that... Uh, when the uh, when the signal uh, when the input signal has a higher frequency, that means uh, the higher the noise uh, will be introduced in the system. Okay, so we want uh, to uh, to avoid to overcome uh, this uh, the increment of noise due to the higher frequency in the system. So what we need to do is we need to increase uh, the signal level, okay. So as you can see from the picture on the left, okay, picture on the left, you see that uh, the center here is the carrier frequency here is the center carrier, and you see that uh, in FM, uh, the the frequency of the carrier varies according to the uh, varies according to the uh, input signal frequency. So if the input signal frequency is higher that means we are going we are moving into a region where it contains higher magnitudes of frequency of noise okay so as you can see from the picture on the left sorry the the ni hasil contingan yang lepas so saya tak boleh nak padam okay as you can see um, from doctor, yeah sorry uh, sorry interrupt. Okay. Uh, doctor record kan for 2G session uh, oh, yeah. class. Yeah. Uh, doctor record kan? Yeah, yeah, saya record. Alright, okay, okay. Sorry interrupt. Ah uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, for today's class I have uh, I'm now recording right now. And for the last week also I also have recorded. Okay, so uh, don't, don't worry. Saya saya ingat untuk record. Okay. So saya proses, uh, saya proses. So as you can see from the picture uh, as you can see from the picture here, um, when when the input frequency is higher, that means uh, uh, the frequency deviation will be much uh, further away from the center. Okay, and remember that in FM, the amplitude of the carrier remains the same; only the frequency varies according to the input. Okay, so. Uh, at higher input frequency, you can see that uh, the signal-to-noise ratio would be smaller. Okay, so here the above here is the signal level. Okay, the signal level, the FM signal level. Okay, it remains constant, and you see that the noise level also increased. Okay, when we use a higher higher uh, 
magnitude of uh, input uh, frequency. So the, the signal to noise ratio is lower compared to if we have a, a smaller magnitude of input frequency. Okay, so that means the noise level on uh, here. Uh, so so maybe I should uh, draw on the left. Eh? So, so look at this. Kalau you lihat di sini eh. So here the the uh, the noise level is lower compared to the uh, signal level. So that means we can achieve better SNR at lower uh, frequency. But if we if we use a higher input frequency. That means uh, the noise level also will be higher. Okay, as the result, the SNR would be smaller. But what, what, what we want to do is that uh, we want to do pre-emphasis and de-emphasis process as shown on the right picture. Okay, picture this black canon, where we want to increase um, uh, the amplitude of the FM signal. Okay, accordingly, uh, accordingly, uh, when we increase the, when we use a higher frequency, that means the higher the input frequency that we use, we need to increase more the amplitude of the FM signal. Okay, lagi besar input frequency yang kita gunakan, kita perlu menggandakan dengan lebih, kita perlu gandakan amplitude FM signal lebih besar. Okay, so the higher the input frequency that we use, we need to uh, to do uh, we need to increase uh, the fm signal level more uh, much higher okay so you see that uh, for example here if i use a, a lower uh, input frequency uh, uh, i just need to increase a little bit of the uh, signal level and if i use a higher input frequency i need to increase the signal level by much higher factor Okay, so that so that I can achieve higher SNR for all input frequencies. Okay, dengan cara kita gandakan pre-emphasis ini, kita dapat mencapai um, nilai SNR yang lebih besar. Okay, so remember that the higher the SNR, the better will be the quality of the signal. Okay. So, since we already increase in the transmitter, that means we also need to decrease with the same factor in the receiver after demodulation process. Okay, so if you see in the example here, is uh, this is the example about uh, this picture. Okay, so the first, uh, you are given a, a transmitter and receiver system. Okay, the, so the transmitter using a VCO voltage control modulator voltage uh, FM frequency modulator, okay, VCO voltage control oscillator. Uh, you see that VCO varies according to the voltage uh, with a deviation sensitivity K1, uh, 1 kilohertz per volt. And at the receiver side, we use a PLL FM demodulator, which has a transfer function of KD, 1 volt per kilohertz. And we are given three input signals. So now we have three input signals at three different frequencies, 1 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz, and 3 kilohertz. So all of the input signal has, uh, all of the input signal have different amplitudes. Okay, so, so now we, we are given three questions. Okay, so the first questions ask you to determine the frequency deviations, delta F, okay, at the transmitter side, uh, at the output of the VCO, uh, output of the modulator and then you are uh, you have been asked to find the SNR okay the second uh, the second question asks you to find the SNR after the demodulation process in the receiver okay so the first and second questions uh, does not uh, the first and second question uh, do not use the uh, pre-emphasis and de-emphasis process only the third questions will use the pre-emphasis and de-emphasis process. So this example want to show you the difference of SNR if we use a pre-emphasis and de-emphasis and also without pre-emphasis, de-emphasis. Okay, kita nak bandingkan uh, apakah hasil SNR yang, um, apakah hasil SNR, apakah nilai SNR 
uh, apabila kita tidak menggunakan pre-emphasis de-emphasis proses dengan ataupun dengan kita menggunakannya. So apakah perbezaannya? Kita nak kita ingin lihat perbezaannya. So as you can see from uh, this picture, okay. So picture on the left is for first and second questions. Okay. So you are given. Uh, oh, sorry again, I cannot erase uh, this. Kita saya tidak pernah padam. I cannot erase the this uh, fonts because I because this is from last week. So it's already been saved in the PowerPoint. So I cannot erase this one. So I can. I will continue to to jot down uh, uh, anything of uh, everything of my explanations over here. So. You see that we have three input signals on the left. Okay, see on the left, we have three input signal: four kilo uh, at one kilohertz, two kilohertz, and three kilohertz. And uh, the amplitude is four volt, two volt, and one volt. Okay, so these in three input signal will be put into the modulator VCO. Okay, so this VCO has a transfer function of k1 uh, equal to 1 kilohertz per volt so dia ada satu transfer function sebanyak 1 kilohertz per volt so that means uh, dia mengalami perubahan sebanyak 1 kilohertz for every uh, voltage uh, difference okay for every voltage difference they're gonna be uh, 1 kilohertz of frequency variations Okay, akan berlaku perubahan 1 kHz untuk setiap voltage. So, as you can see that we can find the delta F. Delta F at the output of VCO. Delta F adalah output daripada VCO ini. Which is equal to VN, the input, the input signal amplitude multiplied with the transfer function K1. Okay, so we have three input amplitudes here. We have four 4 volt, 2 volt, and 1 volt of input. Okay, so the input signal, you see that we have input over here, and we multiplied with the uh, VCO uh, transfer function, K1. We multiplied with 1 kilohertz. So as a result, we produce delta F, three, def three values of delta F, which is delta F1, 4 kilohertz, delta F2, 2 kilohertz, and delta F3 equal to 1 kilohertz. Okay, so we have 3 delta F. And then, you see that the output of the modulator uh, is transmitted to the trans to the receiver and it, it has been received in the demodulator. So actually, you can see that in this example, we skip a few process. We only show you the modulation process and demodulation process. Okay, so modulation process at the transmitter, demodulation process at the receiver. So at the receiver, okay, in the PLL, so the PLL has a transfer function 1 volt per kilohertz. That means this PLL uh, will have a voltage increment about 1 volt for every uh, kilohertz, for every 1 kilohertz of the input. Setiap, kilo, setiap 1 kilohertz of the input akan berlaku perubahan 1 volt. That means we can find the output, okay, V out. Okay, since we have three input, that means we're going to have three V out. Okay, kita akan ada tiga V out. So, V out is equal to delta F multiplied with PLL transfer function KD. Okay, so delta F1 multiplied with KD, delta F2 multiplied with KD, okay, over here. And delta F3 multiplied with KD. So we have, uh, we're going to produce output voltage equal to 4 volt, 2 volt, and 1 volt. So this is the output. So if we, if we uh, draw the frequency spectrum, you, we're going to, we, we produce the same frequency spectrum of the input. Okay, kita menghasilkan uh, frequency spectrum yang sama eh. Seperti dalam input, seperti input tadi ya. Eh. So we have uh, four kilo, uh, four volt for one kilohertz of input, two volt for two kilohertz of, uh, sorry, four volt for one kilohertz of output, 
2 volt for 2 kilohertz of output and 1 volt for 3 kilohertz of output. Okay, so this is the output. So you can see that the output is similar with the input. So kita dapat signal yang asal. We got the original input signal. And so, so up to here, we solve the first question. Okay, and then the second question say that if the if the noise, okay, if if uh, if the noise is introduced in the system, okay, where we have the noise level equal to zero point one volt for one kilohertz, zero point two five volt for 2 kilohertz and 0.5 volt for 3 kilohertz so this is the given noise okay the given noise from question number 2 okay dalam question number 2 uh, kamu diberikan noise uh, sebanyak ini eh uh, so ada tiga jenis ada tiga level of noise where you are given a three level of noise for uh, for different frequencies so the question asks find the SNR. Kira dia punya SNR. So, since we have three input, that means we're going to produce three SNR. Okay, we're going to produce three SNR. Remember, SNR is equal to signal level uh, divided with uh, noise level. Okay, signal level dibahagikan dengan noise level. So, you see that uh, signal level, we have three signal level. Okay, Remember that we have uh, uh, three signal level. We have uh, four volt, two volt, and one volt. Noise level, you are given in the question, second question, you are given the noise level 0 0.1, 0 0.25, and 0 0.5. So when you want to find the SNR, that means we need to find one by one. The first SNR is equal to four volt divided with 0 0.1 volt for the noise. So that means 4 divided with 0 0.1, we're going to produce 40, okay, as shown in the picture on the left, 40. And then 2 volt divided with 0 0.21, sorry, 2 volt divided with 0 0.25 volt for the noise, we're going to produce uh, 8, okay, SNR equal to 8 at 2 kilohertz. And then at 3 kilohertz, the SNR would be 1 volt for the signal level divide with 0 0.5 for the noise level. So 1 divide with 0 0.5, we're going to produce 2. Okay, SNR equal to 2 at 3 kilohertz. Okay, so this is uh, the SNR value for different frequencies. So as you can see that uh, the higher the input frequency that we used, the lower would be the SNR. At the receiver, okay. SNR ini dikira pada receiver, pada output receiver. So uh, we we don't want it, we uh, we don't want uh, SNR to be uh, to become much 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 slower. Uh, sorry, much much lower if we use uh, higher input frequency. Kita tak nak kalau kita gunakan uh, input yang lebih tinggi, input frequency yang lebih besar, hasilnya uh, SNR akan menjadi semakin kecil. We don't want to be like that. Okay, so uh, then it comes to the next questions, which is question number three in the example. Okay, if you read question number three. So question number three said that uh, we introduce the pre-emphasis and the emphasis network. Then repeat the same process. Okay, the question asks you to repeat the same process. Okay, dia suruh buat kira semula SNR. Kiranya kita menggunakan Kita, kita introduce, uh, we introduce a uh, pre-emphasis and de-emphasis network. So you can see that pre-emphasis network, picture on the right, pre-emphasis network uh, is introduced before the VCO and de-emphasis network is introduced after the demodulator, which is after demodulation process. Okay, so now the question asks you to repeat the same process, find the SNR. Okay, find the SNR and find the output voltage and find the delta F. Okay, so in this picture, you're going to see that uh, the input, we still have the same input, 4, 2, and 1 at 1, 2, 3 kilohertz. 
and then put inside the pre-emphasis network. So what happened is that the pre-emphasis network will uh, increase the amplitude of the input. Okay, so the higher the input signal, the higher the input signal frequency, uh, the higher would be the uh, amplification factor. For example, if you can see that here, uh, at 1 kilohertz, uh, you're going to see that the, uh, the, uh, the pre-emphasis network produce 4 volt. That means it only multiplies with 1, factor of 1. And then for the second frequency, you see that the value is 4 volt. Okay, from 2 volt become 4 volt. That means it's multiplied by factor of 2. You can direct it and do it. And then at 3 kilohertz, you see that uh, the pre-emphasis network produce 4 volt also. So from 1 volt become 4 volt. That means it's multiplied with 4, factor of 4. Uh, so we need to remember this uh, kind of factor. So this is just for the example. Eh? Uh, it's not necessary you need to multiply with 1, 2, 4, and so on. Uh, it depends on the pre-emphasis design. Okay, tidak semestinya semua sistem menggunakan 1, 2, darab 1, darab 2, darab 4. Eh? So, depend on the system. Okay, this is for, the, for this example. And then, this put inside the VCO and we're going to produce the delta F. We have delta F1, delta F2, delta F3. So, delta F1. Uh, is equal to uh, input frequency amplitude multiplied with K1. So 4 volt multiplied with 1 kilohertz, we're going to produce 4 kilohertz. Delta F1, one, uh, 4 kilohertz. Delta F2, 4 kilohertz. Delta F3, 4 kilohertz. Okay. And then this signal from the transmitter, transmitted to the receiver. And at the receiver, we're going to do the demodulation process at the demodulator. So what happened is that PLL has a uh, transfer function KD 1 volt per kilohertz. That means it's going to uh, have a 1 volt of variation for each kilohertz of frequency. So therefore, you see that the output of the PLL demodulator is uh, delta F multiplied with uh, KD. So the uh, V out 1 is equal to 4 kilohertz multiplied with 1 volt per this one. Eh? So del, uh, V out 1 is equal to 4 kilohertz multiplied with 1 volt per kilohertz. So we have V out 1, 4 volt, V out 2, 4 volt, V out 3, 4 volt. And if we draw the frequency spectrum, we you're gonna see like this, okay? So 4 volt at 1 kilohertz. 4 volt at one, uh, 2 kilohertz and 4 volt at 3 kilohertz. Given the same input, uh, given the same uh, noise level introduced in the system as previously, okay, as previously, uh, it said that the noise is 0 0.1. So this is the same noise as previously. Eh? Uh, they menggunakan noise yang sama, okay, noise amplitude yang sama. Uh, which is 0 0.1 volt at 1 kilohertz, 0 0.25 volt at 2 kilohertz, and 0 0.5 volt at 3 kilohertz of noise. So noise, uh, you see that the noise, uh, uh, as previously, as I said previously, that the noise amplitude is higher at higher free input frequency. Okay, and if we if we calculate the SNR, okay, if we calculate the SNR, so so, so the signal level is 4, so you see that we have uh, 4, 4 volt, 4 volt, and 4 volt, and the noise level is 0 0.1, 0 0.25, and 0 0.5. And if you, if you calculate the SNR, you're going to produce three, three, 3 values of SNR. First SNR at 1 kilohertz, which is uh, 4 multiplied, sorry, 4 divided with 0 0.1. We're going to produce SNR1 equal to 40 at 1 kilohertz. Okay, 40. And, and then at 2 kilohertz, the SNR is 4 divided with 0 0.25. So it is equal to 16. Okay, it is equal to 16 at 2 kilohertz. And then for 
volt of signal level divide with 0.5 volt of noise level we're going to produce 8 SNR equal to 8 at 3 kilohertz so you see that uh, previously previously the SNR is 40 8 and 2 now we produce SNR 40 16 and 8 which is much better. Okay, lebih baik sebenarnya. Okay, so dengan uh, when we use the pre-emphasis and de-emphasis, we produce a better SNR. Okay, remember the higher the SNR, the better will be the quality of the signal. Okay, so uh, so this is the SNR, and remember uh, we need uh, the signal needs to be passed through the de-emphasis network. Okay, so in the de-emphasis network we need to reduce by the same factor that we increased previously in the transmitter. Remember, the, incre uh, the increment factor is 1, 2, and 4, multiplied 1, multiplied 2, multiplied 4. So we need to divide with 1, divide 2, divide 4 at different frequencies. So that means uh, at first, at, the, at 1 kilohertz, okay, at 1 kilohertz, we need to divide 4 with 1. Okay, the, the, the factor is 1. And at 2 kilohertz, we need to divide the input signal level with factor of 2. So 4 divide with 2, we're going to produce 2 volt. Okay, so see from uh, here, picture on the right. Eh? And then uh, 4 volt of input, okay, sorry, 4 volt of output here, we need to divide with factor of 4. That means it's going to produce 1 volt, 1 volt at the output after the emphasis network okay and then similar with the noise okay because the noise is introduced at the receiver so the noise also needs to be reduced by the same factor that means noise level 0 0.1 divide with 1 uh, you get 0 0.1 volt noise level 0 0.25 you need to divide with factor of 2 so 0 0.5 0 0.25 divide with 2, you're going to produce 0 0.125. 0 0.5 volt for at 3 kilohertz divide with factor of 4. So that means 0 0.5 divide 4, we're going to produce 0 0.125. Okay. Remember that the noise also will be divided with the same factor. Okay. Tadi kita divide a signal level. Sekarang kita perlu divide uh, noise level juga kerana kedua-dua ini masuk ke dalam pre-emphasis. Okay, both signal and the noise are insert to the uh, de-emphasis network. That means the de-emphasis network will reduce the signal level and also the noise level by the same factor. Okay, so this does not change the SNR. Dia tidak mengubah SNR. Kenapa macam tu eh? So, if you can see from the picture on the right, the signal level is 4 volt, the noise level is 0 0.1. So, if you divide 4 and 0 0.1, okay, 4 and 0 0.1, you're going to produce 4 SNR at the output at 1 kilohertz. Okay, and then if you divide 2, the second frequency at 2 kilohertz, 2 volt divide with 0 0.1 to 5, okay, 2 volt divide with 0 0.125, you're going to produce 16. SNR equal to 16 at 2 kilohertz. And then at 3 kilohertz, zero, uh, you see that the SNR is equal to 1 divide with 1, 0 0.125. 1 dibagikan dengan 0.125 pada 3 kilohertz. So you, you're going to produce SNR equal to 8 at 3 kilohertz. So uh, nothing changed. Eh? The, the SNR of the de-emphasis network is the same as SNR before the de-emphasis network. Okay, SNR pada output de-emphasis sama dengan SNR sebelum de-emphasis network. Okay, so dia cuma berlaku pengurangan dari segi faktor tersebut. Eh? Tetapi SNR-nya masih sama. Okay, so uh, conclusion is that better to have the pre-emphasis and de-emphasis network in the system so that we can produce better SNR. Okay. So, 
the next topic is about uh, FM signal generation. So how we want to generate the FM signal. So generation, FM signal generation happens at the transmitter. So this is uh, hap, uh, this is uh, happen. Uh, so the signal F FM generator is the uh, we can say that this is a modulator. Okay, the the um, uh, the block diagram in the transmitter that produces the FM signal is the modulator. So process ini berlaku dalam modulator. And in the practical cases, okay, in the practical system, we have many types of uh, we have many types of um, FM modulator. Ada banyak jenis FM modulator. Uh, in your notes, we only shows you the we only show you the the uh, the most basic FM modulator. Kita tunjukkan yang paling basic sebenarnya. Okay, so uh, uh, okay, uh, so we have a uh, two types of FM modulator. Okay, kita ada dua jenis FM modulator. Uh, the first one is what we call as a direct FM modulator, which means that uh, the modulator produces the FM signal directly to the input, directly from the input. Okay, and the second type of modulator, FM modulator, is indirect FM modulator. Okay, means that we indirectly produce FM signal uh, from uh, based on the input signal. Okay, we indirectly produce FM signal uh, based on the input signal. Apa maksud dia? Nanti saya akan jelaskan. Eh? So, uh, direct FM, you see that um, the modulator produce uh, uh, FM signal at the output directly based on the amplitude variation of the input. Okay, the modulator ini dia menghasilkan FM signal. Remember FM signal, it, uh, the frequency, the carrier frequency uh, varies according to the uh, input, uh, according to the amplitude of the input signal variations. Okay, dia maknanya uh, uh, output frequency FM ini uh, carriernya uh, carrier signal adalah uh, dia dalam FM signal uh, carrier frequency varies according to the amplitude variation of the input okay so uh, in this case you see that that uh, am amplitude uh, the amplitude variation at the input directly change the frequency of the carrier. Okay, so if you see from here in this picture, one of the examples, salah satu example for the uh, for the direct FM modulator is what we call as the vector diode. Okay, so this uh, vector diode. Okay, so you see that. Um, okay, before I explain about the vector diode. Uh, I will like I will uh, mention about the definition of direct FM. Eh? So uh, direct FM uh, in 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 the direct FM system, the instantaneous frequency is directly varied with the information signal. So as I say that um, the carrier frequency is directly varied by the amplitude variation of the input. Okay, so here. Okay, so Fi here is a uh, F oscillator. Uh, you can say that this is actually at the output. Eh? So the output uh, frequency is equal to the carrier frequency plus Kf VMT. So VMT is the input. Okay, that means the output frequency directly varied by the input uh, signal amplitudes. Okay, so this is the general equations of the direct FM. That means the output frequency directly change. Okay, so in this example, in the vector diode, okay, salah satunya adalah vector diode. So vector diode is the most basic. You can say that the vector diode is the most basic 
uh, direct FM modulator. We have more complex, uh, we have other complex design of uh, direct FM uh, modulator. Okay, ada banyak jenis, eh? ada yang jenis yang complex design. So, macam-macam. Yang paling basic, yang ini. Okay. So, uh, this example, you see that uh, in this picture, you see that this uh, input signal, modulating input, is insert uh, to here where we have uh, R1 and R2. So it's gonna, uh, you see that, uh, and then we have a uh, VD, direct uh, VD over here, the diode, okay, the diode VD1, and then here we have the transistor. So you see that uh, here we have the uh, VCC. So you see that the input um, signal will uh, varies the uh, the, the, the amplitude at the base of the transistor. Okay, input ini, dia akan uh, mengubah suar, dia akan um, uh, varies, dia akan berubah-ubah, menyebabkan uh, voltage, the base voltage of the transistor varies also. Okay, perubahan uh, amplitude ini, perubahan amplitude daripada input mengakibatkan perubahan voltage pada transistor tersebut. Okay. Yang mana uh, ini kita boleh uh, menghasilkan perubahan frekuensi pada output. Okay. So here what happen is that the amplitude variations of the input produce uh, frequency variation at the output. Perubahan amplitude pada input menghasilkan perubahan frekuensi pada output. Okay. So, you see that the external modulating signal voltage adds to and subtract from the DC bias developed by the R1 and R2, okay, which change the capacitance of the diode VD1 and frequency of the oscillation of the oscillator. So, this is the crystal, uh, crystal oscillator. Sorry. So, the amplitude variations of the modulating signal will varies uh, the oscillator frequencies. Dia akan uh, mengubah suai frekuensi crystal oscillator. So, akibatnya, uh, the output frequency also will varies. Okay? So, positive alteration of the input modulating signal will increase Okay, the reverse bias and uh, the reverse bias on VD1. Okay, positive alteration of modulating signal will increase the reverse bias of VD1. Okay, diode VD1 and increase the oscillation frequency. Negative alteration of the input will decrease the oscillation frequency. Okay, at the output. Okay, so dia terbalik. Okay, so negative uh, alteration of the input akan mengakibatkan uh, uh, will decrease the oscillation of the output. That means what you say that uh, during the uh, positive alteration of the input, okay, uh, the frequency at the output will be increased. Okay, when the uh, amplitude of the input goes to the negative side, what happens is that the frequency would be lower. The output frequency would be lower. Nah, itu maksudnya. So, uh, you see that this is, a, uh, this is also based on the design. If you want to make it different, you can also do like this. Eh? Boleh juga you design... Uh, system yang mana uh, positive alteration will produce a uh, lower frequency and negative alteration will produce higher frequency terbalik. Boleh juga. Eh? It depends on the design. But in this design, say that during the positive alteration of the input, it will produce uh, positive, uh, sorry, higher frequency. The frequency would be increased. And during the negative alteration of the input, the output frequency will be decreased. So, based on this director diode. Okay. So, uh, kalau kita lihat di sini, eh, 
uh, perubahan amplitude input itu secara langsung mengakibatkan perubahan frekuensi. So that means the amplitude variation directly change the uh, carrier frequency at the output. Okay. So now we want to see the indirect FM. What is indirect FM? Indirect FM means that uh, the, the, the amplitude variation of the input uh, indirectly change the frequency at the output. Okay, perubahan amplitude pada input secara tak langsung mengakibatkan perubahan frekuensi pada output. Lain pula eh. So, you see that in this case, actually, we do the process of phase modulation. Okay, indirect FM means that we do the process of phase modulation. That means, in, uh, in this case, the amplitude variation of the input directly change the phase of the carrier. And it is indirectly change the frequency of the carrier. Okay, nampak eh, dia punya perubahan. Eh? Sebenarnya kita melakukan proses uh, phase modulation yang mana perubahan amplitude daripada input tadi secara langsung mengakibatkan perubahan fasa carrier. Dan secara tak langsung, dia mengakibatkan perubahan frekuensi carrier pada output. Uh, so, actually, we do the process of phase modulation. Okay. And remember that when we do the process of phase modulation, we are actually producing narrow band FM at the output. Kita menghasilkan narrow band FM pada output sebenarnya. Nanti kita akan lihat. Okay. So, you see that you can read here angle modulation includes a frequency modulation FM and phase modulation. Uh, kita ada dua. So, remember that FM and PM are related to each other. Okay. So, FM and PM are interrelated and cannot be changed without the other changing. Okay. They saling berkait. So, the information signal frequency also deviates the carrier frequency in PM. So, phase modulation produce frequency modulation. Since the amount of phase shift is varying, the effect is that if the frequency is changed. Uh, so, ni dia punya, dia punya explanation. Okay. Since FM is produced by PM, the latter is referred to as indirect FM. So, that means we are producing FM indirectly by doing the process of PM. Okay. Itu maksud indirect FM. So, the information. Uh, so, how we want to do this? How we want to do the phase modulation? Uh, the information signal is first integrated. Okay, mula-mula kita akan do process integral, kamiran. And then use, uh, and then we transfer the signal to the phase modulator. Okay, phase modulate crystal control oscillator. Okay, we, we pass the signal to the phase modulator, which provide frequency stability. Okay. So, in order to uh, minimize the distortion of the phase, the modulation is kept small, thereby resulting in narrowband FM. So, we are actually producing narrowband FM signal. Okay. So, if we want to produce a wideband FM, we need to multiply uh, the frequency using a multiplier or using other method. Okay. So, in this... Uh, uh, equations. It shows you how to produce, uh, it shows you what happened to the theta t. Okay, remember that uh, theta, remember kalau kita buat uh, theta prime t is equal to uh, d d dt of theta t. Okay, and therefore, if you want to find theta t, that means we need to do the integral process. Okay, integral of theta prime t. Terbalik. Okay, so this is a dt. Okay, so therefore, uh, remember theta prime t, theta prime t is a kf vmt. So we need to do the integral of kf vmt. So as like this. Okay, so we can find the theta t. Uh, remember indirect fm means that we produce a pm phase modulation 
and indirectly we also do we also produce uh, FM in this case you're gonna see that we're gonna produce narrowband FM okay and you see that here the narrowband FM signal is multiplied uh, in frequency by means of frequency multiplier so in order to produce the wide band FM so nanti kita akan lihat eh, how to produce a wide band FM so because uh, most of the uh, radio application it uses a wide band FM kebanyakan radio application menggunakan wide band FM uh, system uh, in that case we need to use, we need to multiply the frequency okay so we're going to see how to multiply later based on this example okay so uh, here okay so the above picture here shows the uh, shows the block diagram of the indirect FM. So the first here we have the integrator and then we have a narrowband phase modulator. Okay, so this is modulate with the, uh, we modulate the input signal with the crystal control oscillator and at the output here we actually produce a narrowband FM, NB FM. And if you want to produce a wide band FM, we, we can use multiplier, okay, where we will produce wide band FM, W, B, FM. Okay, so uh, this, uh, the picture below, okay, picture below here, okay, gambar di bawah ini. So the picture below is actually from this block diagram, it is actually up to here, okay. Okay, picture, the picture below is actually uh, from the block diagram over here where it consists of integrator and the narrowband phase modulator only. Okay, gambar di bawah ini mengandungi integrator dan juga narrowband uh, phase modulator. Okay, so this is the, you see that the picture below here, this is the integrator. Uh, this is the crystal uh, oscillator over here okay crystal oscillator and then here we have the uh, the the x uh, the rounded x here is actually narrowband phase modulator okay this is the narrowband phase modulator and here you see that we produce narrowband fm okay so you see that uh, this uh, example has been come out has been uh, has been asked in the previous uh, final exam a few semest uh, a few semesters eh, we have asked the same uh, almost the same questions about this eh. kita telah uh, tanya kepada pelajar uh, beberapa semester tentang soalan seperti ini eh, where the students needs to define the equations at each of the output okay so this is important for you so I will explain uh, uh, this uh, diagram. Eh? Saya akan terangkan. And if you don't understand, please uh, ask me questions. Okay. So now you see that I want to explain the picture below. Okay. Saya nak tunjukkan gambar di bawah ini. So at the input at the here we have the crystal. Uh, on the left here we have crystal uh, control oscillator where it produce the uh, carrier frequency signal okay and here it, it is given as vc cos 2 pi fct so this is actually uh, vct eh? this is actually vct where this is actually vc cos okay 2 pi fct so in this example it use it uses the cosine function as the input okay and you see that VMT is here. Okay, the input uh, information signal is here. You are given uh, 2 pi KF. You see that here, the input is uh, 2 pi KF. MT here is a VMT. Okay, that means the input, okay, I, I, I write here, that means the input is 2 pi KF. So, 2 so that means the input is 
2 pi kf uh, vmt since uh, we are using cosine for the uh, carrier better to use the uh, cosine also for the modulating signal input modulating signal that means uh, kf vm cos 2 pi fm t okay 2 pi kf vm cos uh, 2 pi fm t okay this is the input modulating signal so this input modulating signal is passed to the integrator okay so we will do the integration process for this input okay while for the carrier the carrier is passed to the phase shifter okay this uh, this is what we call as a phase shifter ps eh? phase shifter it will shift the frequency uh, uh, sorry it will shift the phase by about 90 degree phase shift so remember if you do the phase shift 90 degree for cosine it will produce sine function Okay, perubahan 90 darjah untuk cosine function menghasilkan sine function. Okay, just remember that uh, this is trigonometry. The difference between uh, sine and cosine is about 90 degree. Okay, dia punya perbezaan adalah 90 darjah. So, here, uh, the, the carrier becomes sine function. That means here is Vc sine 2 pi. Uh, FCT. Okay. And what about to, uh, what about the input? What about the input modulating signal? So after the integration process, you see here, uh, the input will be we, we will do the integral process for the input. What happen is that uh, you will uh, integrate the cosine function, which will produce a positive sine. Okay. Uh, kameran cos akan menghasilkan positive sign. So that means here you're going to produce uh, 2 pi uh, kf vm okay divide with uh, 2 pi fm okay uh, this is uh, sign 2 pi fmt Kamiran, eh? Kamiran cosine. And you see that we can actually um, uh, we can actually do like this, eh? 2 pi divide with 2 pi, so they can cancel. It will cancel out. Okay. Kf vm over fm. Okay. Kf vm is delta f. Divide with fm. So, it is actually beta f actually, eh? Sebenarnya, dia adalah beta f. Okay, so therefore, uh, here you see that <coughs> uh, this is two pi kf, two pi kf, uh, two pi kf m. Okay, so two pi and two pi. So this is beta f. So I can rewrite again. Eh, saya boleh tulis semula dia adalah beta f. Okay, because it is a kf vm over fm. So beta f uh, sine. 2 pi fmt okay sorry uh, m is supposed to be subscript eh? okay fm subscript okay the, it is actually like this eh? f m subscript okay so here is beta f sine 2 pi FMT. Okay, and we put inside the narrow band phase modulator. You see that here the, the symbol is X. X here means that this will do the process of multiplication. Okay, akan berlakulah process multiplication. Uh, ini seperti uh, apa yang berlaku dalam uh, AM sebelumnya. If you, if you remember in the, uh, in the phasing method, uh, phasing method uh, in the AM that we have learned previously. Okay, so uh, you see, if you remember that uh, we put inside the uh, make, uh, the modulator, what happened is that it's going to do the process of multiplication. Uh, ini macam kita yang telah kita belajar sebelum ini, eh, berlakunya process multiplication. 
So what happened here? Okay, after the uh, what happened here is that okay, we're gonna produce a uh, output which is equal to uh, multiplication of the input. That means VC sine two pi FCT multiplied with beta F sine two pi FMT. Okay, that means this is uh, uh, beta F. Okay, beta F VC uh, sine two pi F C T uh, sine. Okay, sine uh, two pi F M. And according to trigonometry identity, sine multiplied with sine, we're going to produce uh, cos minus cos. Okay. So actually like this, so it becomes a beta F BC divide with 2 and then big bracket. So here is a uh, cos 2 pi uh, FC minus FM. Uh, Fc minus Fmt minus cos Fc plus Fm. Uh, sorry, uh, two pi. Yeah, the other two pi. So cos two pi Fc minus uh, sorry, plus FM, uh, plus FM, T, and then close big bracket. So we, we produce a, a lower sideband and also the upper sideband. Okay, kita menghasilkan up, uh, lower sideband and also the upper sideband. Okay, uh, so here this is uh, uh, the equations and then you see that from below here, okay, so this is actually VC cos 2 pi FCT. So that means we need to plus with cos. Okay. Over here, actually, we need to plus with cos. Okay. So that means, uh, you see that here is a VC cos. So that means we're going to produce uh, three components. Eh? Kita akan menghasilkan tiga komponen. Uh, apabila kita, uh, when we do the uh, addition process, eh, uh, lower and upper, that means we're going to produce three components. So, the first component is, so maybe I need to erase this one. Eh. Sorry about my, uh, my writing is not good. Eh. Sorry, tulis and saya buruk sikit. So, uh, okay, you see that when we do the uh, summation process, okay, so now we, we want to, we want to see the output here. Okay, kita nak lihat apakah outputnya. Eh. So, the output here is actually, uh, we we plus uh, above and below. Kita tambahkan bahagian atas dan bawah. So, we're going to produce VC cos 2 pi FCT plus okay, plus beta F VC over 2 uh, the first, uh, the lower sideband. You can, you can put here the lower sideband cos 2 pi FC minus FM uh, T. T over here. And then this is minus. Uh, ni eh, tanda minus tadi eh. Okay, tolak eh, sebab tadi sine and sine will be, it will produce a negative cos minus cos. So, minus uh, beta F VC over 2 for the upper side band. Cos 2 pi FC plus FM T. Okay, FC plus FM T. So, that means we are actually producing output uh, with three components. We have carrier components. The first one is the carrier components. And then we produce a, a lower sideband and then upper sideband. Okay. And 
if you draw, okay, if you draw the spectrum, eh, so maybe I need to erase this one. Okay, so if you draw the frequency spectrum, you can see like this, eh? Uh, let's say here is uh, F, okay, and the y-axis is uh, amplitude, eh? v. v versus F, and here is the uh, the carrier, and we produce like this. Okay, so this is at Fc. Sorry. So. Here is uh, the carrier component has a free, has the amplitude of uh, VC over here. Okay, amplitude-nya adalah VC eh, kalau kita based on the equation. Remember, uh, remember when we want to draw the uh, frequency spectrum, first of all, we need to define the equation. We need to know the equation so that we can draw the frequency spectrum. Without the equation, it is impossible or very difficult for you to 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 know what is the frequency component okay so okay so here i continue again so i erase this one for a while so vc at frequency fc and then you see that at lower frequency uh, fc minus fm the amplitude is beta f vc over 2. Okay, beta f vc over 2. And for the upper frequency fc plus fm, the amplitude is beta f vc over 2. So actually, we produce the am like signal. Signal seperti am. Okay, kita menghasilkan uh, signal seperti eh, seperti amplitude modulation, seperti eh, as if it is look like uh, AM signal, but but it is actually narrow band FM. Dia sebenarnya adalah narrow band FM. Why it is say that as uh, kenapa uh, why it is called as the narrow band FM? Kenapa dipanggil narrow band? Because the bandwidth is small in this case. For FM, this is considered as small bandwidth. You see that the difference here, okay, the bandwidth, okay, if you want to calculate the bandwidth, okay, the, uh, you see that the component, uh, the frequency component is separated by uh, FM. The distance is FM. So that means the bandwidth is equal to 2 FM. Okay, and if you want to to, uh, to calculate the power, okay, again, the power is um, P total is equal to uh, PC, P0. Uh, yeah, uh, P carrier, carrier component plus P LSB plus P USB. Uh, we, we, we do the summation of all power. For each component, okay, kita tambahkan semua power. That means uh, PC. If you see that PC is equal to VC square over to R, okay, sorry, over to R, and then for PLSB equal to PUSB, uh, so equal to uh, beta F vc over 2 square so this is a beta f vc over 2 square divide with 2r okay so you you're gonna get the answer so this is uh, related here okay okay so that means uh vc square over 2r plus beta f vc over 2 square over 2r plus another beta f vc over 2 square over 2r okay, kita tambahkan ketiga-tiganya kita akan dapat total power okay 
So, this kind of questions has been asked in the previous final exam. Pernah ditanya. Okay. Where the student asks, has been asked up to the power calculations. Okay. So, this is how you, you should uh, write the power. Uh, this is just example. I just show you based on the variables. Di sini saya tunjukkan bentuk variable. But in the final exam, previously, uh, it gives you the values. Okay, you are given the frequency, you are given the amplitudes and so on. So, just replace with the values. Okay, you need to replace with the, you, you need to use with the values. Gunakan uh, nilai. Sure. Yeah. Kalau yeah, boleh silakan. Once, kalau question di bagi uh, apa ni carrier frequency tu which is under psi function, maksudnya dekat sini kita kena exchange phase shifted uh, untuk psi function jadi cos baru yeah. kita boleh proceed dengan equation lah. Yeah, so if the input carrier is sine function, that means after phase shifted, it gonna produce a cos. Uh, so and then for and then for the total uh, total output for the after the shifted and then uh, plus with the carrier frequency so the finally output uh, is con considered as the psi function plus the cos and cos lower band and cos upper band ah oh, yeah so that's why you need to to also see the the input uh, the input modulating signal is it also sine or is it still cos or what uh, normally in the previous in the previous final exam kita uh, we give you the same if if the input carrier is cos the modulating signal is cos if the input carrier if the carrier is sine the in modulating signal also sine so easy for you to calculate if it is different that means you need to use a trigonometry uh, differently okay uh, Thank you. okay Thank you. okay welcome so, biasanya kita akan bagi uh, untuk memudahkan pelajar biasanya uh, uh, based on the previous exam uh, previous exam apa yang kita buat adalah uh, either we give you a carrier as cos modulating signal also cos or we also or maybe we give you a carrier signal as sine modulating signal also sine function so that easy for you to do the calculations okay uh, so now you see that, uh, uh, so we, we managed to calculate up to power, okay. So um, based on the previous uh, uh, common mistakes, apa yang berlaku adalah uh, the students uh, is uh, wrongly, uh, maybe the, the, the students define the, the output equations correct, okay. They, they, they hasilkan output uh, equation itu betul, eh. Uh, but when the students calculate the power, they calculate wrongly. What they do is that uh, they do as if it looks uh, as if in the AM signal. Remember in AM, okay, if you remember in AM, uh, we have the, uh, uh, the frequency spectrum is uh, VC, okay, VC and then uh, VM over 2. And then here we have uh, VM over 2, okay. So what I what I saw previously is that students tend to use uh, these kind of things. Eh? Uh, they remember that the the amplitude of the uh, spectrum is the same as in the double sideband full carrier, which is wrong. Okay, where actually you need to draw the frequency spectrum based on your equations. Okay, daripada equation itu barulah you boleh lukis dengan betul. Okay. So, so what happened previously is that they cal they wrongly calculated the power total power. That's it. Okay. So no problem. So now I have shown you the the correct way how to uh, write the equation write the equations and then uh, find the bandwidth and then calculate the total power so you know how to do it now. Okay. And uh, what happened previously is that we introduce eh, here, yeah, sorry, we introduce um, an amplifier. Okay, uh, if I'm not mistaken, previously we introduced amplifier over here. Okay, uh, so uh, find the equations over here after the amplifier. Uh, so sebelum ni kita kita jahat sikit, eh, kita bagi 
uh, amplifier dekat sini eh. So don't worry about the amplifier. Uh, if if there's an amplifier that means uh, you need to multiply the equations with the um, uh, with the gain. Okay? For example, for example, if the gain is 10 dB. For example, contoh eh, uh, if it is given 10 dB uh, uh, amplifier that means when you do the anti log okay anti log of 10 db we're going to produce 10 okay gain equal to 10 now remember when when we want to do calculation when we do, when we want to do multiplication process with the signal we cannot use uh, in decibel we need to do the anti log okay kita perlu buat anti log supaya kita boleh buat uh, multiplication process Okay, so what happened is that if there's an amplifier, that means your equation is going to be like this. Uh, 10 Vc cos 2 pi uh, Fct. Sorry. So every component needs to multiply with, uh, with the gain. Okay, plus... Uh, 10 beta FVC, eh? so 10 beta FVC, so 10 beta FVC is actually uh, 10 divide with 2, so you're going to produce uh, 5, eh? so say what we were last time, eh? sorry. So 10 uh, beta FVC over 2 is actually 5, uh, 5 beta F. BC, eh? So, I bagikan dengan 2, so 10 divide with 2, so it's going to produce a 5. So, this is a lower sideband, so cos uh, 2 pi uh, Fc minus Fm uh, T uh, minus uh, 5 beta F uh, Vc cos 2 pi Uh, Fc plus Fm uh, T. Okay. Uh, you just need to multiply with the gain. That's it. Okay. Senang saja. And then, after this, you need to draw the frequency spectrum. That means the frequency spectrum also multiplied with uh, 10. Okay. So, that means this is 10. This is uh, 10. This is 10. Okay. And the power also going to be amplified by factor of 10. Uh, so, that's the difference. Itu perbezaannya lah. Uh, kita biasanya kita jahat sikit, kita tambah apa, uh, something ya. Eh? Uh, either at the output if, or in the input. Uh, so, kalau you lihat dalam uh, test eh, in the test question previously, uh, suddenly we have the amplitude over there. Eh? Okay, so sorry saya belum share lagi jawapan. Nanti saya akan share dalam masa terdekat ya. Eh? Sorry ya. Eh? Okay, so this is uh, the output. So we have discussed about this. So, uh, so I just draw a box. This is if we multiply it with 10. Okay. Okay, so you see that what we produce here is a narrow band FM where the bandwidth is equal to uh, 2 FM. Okay. Now the issue is uh, how we want to increase the frequency. Okay, we are uh, we are not increase the amplitude. Eh? Sekarang isunya adalah uh, macam mana kita nak jadikan dia uh, wide band FM. That means we need to increase the frequency, not the amplitude. Okay, if if we introduce a amplifier, that means we increase the amplitude. But the problem is now we want to increase the frequency so that we can uh, go to the region of wide band FM. Because uh, most of the radio uh, radio application, it use a wide band FM. Kebanyakan application menggunakan wide band FM. Narrow band FM ni kegunaannya tidak banyak. Okay, so based, uh, normally for commercial use, we use a wide band FM. So, in order to uh, to increase the frequency, okay, or what we call as a frequency up conversions. Okay, that means from lower to higher frequency. So we have two options. Either we, we want to use a heterodyning process or we want to use a uh, frequency multiplication process. 
Okay, ada dua uh, cara. Okay, uh, so the word heterodyning means mixing process. Multiplication means we multiplied with a certain factor. Ada dua cara. So what's the difference? So now we're going to see the difference. Okay, so you see that this picture, picture on the, la uh, picture on the left and picture on the right. Picture on the left is using heterodyning process. Okay, this is a heterodyning. Heterodyne means mixing. Okay, perkataan heterodyne itu sendiri bermaksud mixing. Bermakna akan ada dua atau lebih input bergabung. Okay, so you see that here. Okay, uh, in heterodyning process, we can use balance modulator and also the uh, RF oscillator. Okay, so remember balance modulator, dia, meng, dia ada symbol X di sini. Eh? Uh, so it will do the multiplication process actually in the system. So you see that the input here is uh, narrow band FM. The input is narrow band NB FM. Okay, NB FM, narrow band FM. So in narrow band FM, we have uh, FC, delta F. Uh, so this is the input parameters. Okay, this is the input parameters. You are given input parameters, uh, F uh, carrier frequency, delta F input. Uh, M here is a beta F. Eh? So ini sebenarnya adalah beta F. Uh, FM here is the input uh, modulating signal frequency. Beta here is the bandwidth. Okay. So uh, here oscillator produce a RF frequency. Okay, produce a oscillation frequency, uh, which is a FRF. So you see that uh, during the uh, when when we pass into the balance modulator, it will produce a uh, sorry, it will do the process of multiplications. And remember that when we do multiplication process as previously, if you remember that we're going to produce upper and lower sideband. Okay, remember that we produce upper and lower sideband because of this multiplication, sine and sine, for example, eh, they can menghasilkan dua component output. Okay, so because of this trigonometry, they can pecah jadi dua, remember. Eh? So we actually here, actually we, we produce, eh, actually we produce uh, FC, uh, we have uh, FC in uh, plus uh, FC in, where's FC in plus uh, FRF, eh? FRF. Uh, this is if uh, FRF is less than FC, ini sekiranya uh, FRF kurang daripada uh, FC. So FC in minus FRF. Okay, akan ada dua bahagian, upper and lower. And also we have the rest, uh, other. Uh, this is for the carrier, this is for the carrier. What happened to the carrier? I mean, what happened to the carrier? Uh, that means we're going to produce an upper and lower frequency. Okay, and here of course we have delta F out, uh, beta F out, uh, FM out, and also bit, uh, bandwidth out. Akan ada beberapa parameter yang lain. Okay. And then the signal pass through the band pass filter and you see that it will select the sum frequency. So this band pass filter will select only the sum frequency and remove the uh, difference frequency. That means it will select the sum frequency, hasil tambah, the, which is the upper frequency. Okay, upper sideband frequency. It will select the upper sideband and remove the lower sideband. So what happened at the output is that the carrier becomes FC out equal to FC in plus F. Uh, F here is uh, uh, equal to the FRF. F delta F out remains the same. Delta F in. Uh, modulation index, beta F. So this is beta F, eh? Beta F remains the same as the input. Input signal frequency at the output remains the same. Bandwidth, same. Okay. So what happened here? You see that 
heterodyning process only change the carrier frequency. It, it does not change uh, the delta F, the modulation index, the input frequency, and the bandwidth remains the same. Okay, dia hanya dia hanya mengakibatkan perubahan pada carrier frequency sahaja. Tidak ada perubahan pada delta F dan seterusnya. Okay, so this is uh, uh, ini adalah sifat-sifat untuk uh, apa yang berlaku pada heterodyning process. And if you see picture on the right. If we do the multiplication process, so what happened? Okay, so again, similar the input, uh, we have a narrow band FM and BFM. Okay, uh, narrow band FM, of course, we have a few set of parameters. We have the carry frequency input, delta F input, uh, M here is a beta F, uh, FM here is the input uh, signal frequency, here is the bandwidth. What happened at the output? So here we have the frequency multiplier which multiply the frequency by n times. Okay. So what happened at the output? The carrier frequency will be multiplied by n factor. Delta F will be delta F out will be multiplied by n factor compared to the input. Okay, dia akan digandakan sebanyak n factor berbanding input. Modulation index okay, also will be multiplied by n factor from the input. Okay, n multi, uh, modulation, this is a beta f. Eh? So beta f out equal to n multiplied with beta f input. However, the input modulating signal does not change. Tidak berubah kerana uh, input ini daripada luar. Eh, sebab ini uh, modulating signal ini pada asalnya dia dari sumber uh, dari sumber luar yang mana dia tidak uh, dalam case ini dia tidak berubah. Eh. Kita ada different source eh, untuk yang ini. Eh. So the modulating input signal remains the same. Uh, so ini cuma ini saja yang kekal sama. Bandwidth uh, bandwidth, we are not multiplying with N. It is depending on the Bessel bandwidth or Carson's bandwidth. Okay, so if bandwidth by Carson, uh, sorry, if bandwidth by Bessel, you need to look at the table, okay, based on the value of beta F. Okay, kita boleh tentukan nilai uh, bandwidth berdasarkan nilai beta F dengan cara melihat dalam Bessel table. Or we can find the uh, bandwidth by Carson where it is equal to 2 times delta F plus Fm. Okay, that means the, the bandwidth also will be increased. Okay, but it does not necessarily uh, by factor of 10, it depends. Eh? Bandwidth depends. Tapi dia meningkat, eh? it is increased. And this is the example. So this is among the favorite question in the in the final exam. Okay, ini antara soalan-soalan uh, favorite yang uh, sering ditanya dalam final exam. Okay, so example 3.12. Okay, example 3.12. Uh, given that delta F is equal to 3 kilohertz. Okay, you are given the input here. Delta F input 3 kilohertz. Beta 0 0.3, uh, carrier 500 kilohertz. So now we want to do the frequency up conversions by using two different methods. Okay. So the first question asks you to to find the output if we use a heterodyning process. Okay. If we use a heterodyning process, how much is the increment of the output? Okay. Remember, if you use a heterodyning process. Only the carrier frequency will be changed. Okay. So the first question: find the output of the balance modulator with bandwidth a uh, bandpass filter tuned to the sum frequency, and the RF carrier input frequency is ninety nine point five megahertz. Okay. That means uh, we want to find the all the uh, parameters. Okay, we want to find all the modulation properties parameters. 
So the first one we can find what is the FC out. Okay, remember FC out is equal to uh, since we tune to the sum that means FC uh, in plus F RF. Eh? In this case, uh, 500k plus 99.5 megahertz. So you're going to produce FC out equal to 100 megahertz. Okay. And then uh, delta F out remains the same as input equal to delta F in, which is equal to 3 kilohertz. And then uh, we can find a beta F or M. Uh, in the previously, it used the symbol of M. Eh? So beta F out is equal to uh, beta F in, which is equal to 0 0.3. And then what? Uh, you can also uh, determine the FM, FM out. Okay, the modulating signal at the output remains the same as the modulating signal uh, from the input, which is uh, okay here. How, how to find the modulating signal? Uh, so modulating signal is equal to beta F. Divide with, sorry, delta F divide with beta F. Eh? Uh, if you remember that beta F is equal to delta F over FM. So now we want to find FM. That means the uh, FM is equal to delta F over beta F. So delta F over uh, beta F. Okay, so it is equal to uh, 10 kilohertz divide with 0 0.3. So you're going to produce 10 kilohertz. Okay, so 3 kilohertz divide with 0 0.3, you can dapat 10 kilohertz. Okay, what about the bandwidth? The bandwidth is still the same. Okay, the bandwidth is still the same. So if you want to find the bandwidth, uh, maybe you need to look at the Bessel table 0 0.3. So say na chuba kembali kepada Bessel table. Eh? I want to see the Bessel table. So 0 0.3 is uh, somewhere here. 0 0.3 is. Uh, uh, still over here, it's not listed in the table. Let me just narrate dalam table in here. So, if it is not in the table, what you can do is that you can uh, do this on the Carson if you want. Okay, kalau tidak ada dalam table ini, you boleh menggunakan uh, bandwidth by Carson. Okay, tidak ada masalah. Okay, if it is uh, listed here, for example, eh, if let's say the uh, the uh, the modulation index is 0 0.5, katela. If let's say the modulation index is 0 0.5, that means you can find the value of n n, n number of significant side band, which is if the if the modulation index is 0 0.5, that means n equal to two. Okay, n adalah dua. Tetapi di sini dia adalah 0 0.3. Okay, dia tidak ada di sini. So maybe they are the first uh, sideband ataupun second uh, sideband. Eh? So mungkin N adalah satu atau dua. Okay, mungkin. So in that case, if it is not listed in the table, what you can do is you can use a, a bandwidth by Carson. Okay, kita boleh guna bandwidth by Carson. Okay. So bandwidth, uh, bandwidth, uh, you can say that bandwidth is equal to 2 times delta F plus FM. Here is 2 times delta F. We already find delta F. Uh, this is output. Eh? Uh, bandwidth output. Tadi uh, bandwidth input sebenarnya sama dengan output. Eh? 
So bandwidth in and out is equal to 2 times delta F, uh, which is uh, 3 kilohertz, plus uh, 10 kilohertz. FM is 10 kilohertz. So this is equal to 13 times 2, which is uh, 26 kilohertz bandwidth. So input and output, same, still the same. Okay, 26 kilohertz. So this is for the first question. What about for the second question? The second question say that uh, find, find the parameters, find all of these parameters if we use a frequency multiplier with n equal to 10. n factor of, uh, the, multiplica the multiplication factor is equal to 10. Dia punya pendarab adalah 10. So that means, remember in, um, in frequency multiplier, uh, semua berubah kecuali uh, all of the parameters changed except the input modulating frequency. Okay, that means Fc out is equal to Fc in multiplied with 10. Okay, so this is uh, 500 multiplied with 10, so you get uh, 5 megahertz. 5 megahertz. And then what? Delta F out. Delta F out is equal to delta F in multiplied with 10. So this is equal to 30 kilohertz. Okay. And then what? Uh, and then we can find beta F out. Beta F uh, out is equal to beta f in multiplied with 10 so this is becomes 3 okay fm out is equal to fm in uh, which is equal to 10 kilohertz same Okay, and then what? We can also find the, uh, okay, macam mana cari-cari uh, FM, uh, ni macam tadi eh, uh, you want, if you want to find the FM, that means it is delta F divide, sorry, delta F divide with beta F, okay, FM is equal to delta F divide with beta F, you're gonna get the input modulating signal. Okay, macam saya kira tadi eh. So, uh, and then, and then what? We can find the bandwidth. Okay. So, when you want to uh, to differentiate the bandwidth. So, since previously we used a Carson. Uh, so, now you should also use Carson. Because we want to do the same comparison. Kita nak bandingkan secara benda yang sama eh. Uh, kita tak nak satu guna Carson, satu guna Bessel. So, uh, you're going to see the uh, uh, the difference is too big. Eh? Nanti you akan nampak perbezaan yang sangat besar. So, dalam case ini, uh, when you use, when you already use Carson for the first question, I suggest you also to use Carson for the second question. Okay? So, that means the bandwidth here, bandwidth out, is equal to, uh, remember bandwidth in apa? Bandwidth input adalah uh, 2 times delta F plus FM. Okay, we already find the, the bandwidth, which is this bandwidth is equal to uh, the, the, the input bandwidth, okay, which is 26 kilohertz. Sebab tadi kita gunakan, we use the input parameters eh, for delta F and also FM. So this is a uh, bandwidth in also, and also bandwidth out for the first question. And here, you see that bandwidth out here, what we need to do is that this is equal to 2 times uh, delta F out plus Fm out. Okay. So this is uh, 2 times uh, delta F becomes 30 
uh, plus uh, FM is 10 kilohertz. Okay, so I, I do uh, above here. And then here, uh, 30 plus 10, 40, 40 times 2, so you get 80 kilohertz. Okay, 80 kilohertz of uh, bandwidth output. So previously is 26, now becomes 80. Okay, sebelum ini, kalau kita gunakan heterodyning process, we produce only 26 kilohertz of bandwidth. But if we use a multiplication process, we're going to produce output bandwidth equal to 80 kilohertz. So ini dia punya perbandingan. Eh. So this is how we uh, do the calculations. Okay. So remember, this is uh, among the favorite questions. Eh? We have asked students uh, many times in the previous exams about these questions. Eh? Uh, something like this. Eh? Dia punya uh, value berbeza lah. So tak sama dengan dalam nota. But the concept is this still the same. Okay. So uh, for, uh, for this semester final exam also, I suggest you to understand uh, this example. It is very important for you. Okay. Uh, doktor, yeah. saya nak tanya. Ya, yeah, silakan. Kalau katakan beta tu, uh, dia delivery tu, sebab dalam kes ni dia delivery beta tu guna custom method kan? Sebab dia tak ada dalam Bessel function. So, how about kalau dia bagi nilai seperti yang dalam Bessel function tu, dia punya uh, mod modulation index dia bagi 0.5. Okay. So, uh, kita nak determine dia punya properties antara multiplication process dengan uh, heterodyning process. Mm -hmm. So, kita kena uh, cari kedua-dua bandwidth ke macam mana? Uh, no, just uh, either one is okay. Maksudnya, uh, salah either, satu saja lah. Ya, yeah, salah satu saja. Tak perlu cari kedua-dua. If you see for the question, the, the question doesn't spe specifically mention that you need to find bandwidth in Bessel or bandwidth in Carson. Uh, so, salah. Kalau you lihat dalam uh, example ini, uh, mm -hmm. dia tidak secara spesifik menyatakan you perlu cari bandwidth by Carson or by Bessel. Okay, so uh, these questions, the, the purpose of this question is just to mm -hmm. to let the student to do the comparison only, perbezaan, comparison. So, kalau, kalau katakan question diberi uh, value yang bad, modulation index tu uh, ada guna Bessel function tu, kita kena, kita perlu tak? Uh, uh, yeah, I would suggest uh, you use Bessel table. Uh, kalau seandainya, if let's say the, the beta, okay, let's say the beta uh, value is stated in the table, mm -hmm. then my suggestion is for you to use Bessel table because the, the Bessel uh, bandwidth is more accurate. Okay, dia lebih tepat. So, kalau ada dalam table, uh, saya cadangkan you gunakan bandwidth by Bessel. Okay, so if uh, let's say this is, uh, as I said, this, if let's say this is 0 0.5, so 0 0.5 in your table, n is equal to 2, right? Yeah. Uh, so that means the bandwidth going to be uh, 2 times uh, n times fm. Uh, so you're going to produce a value about this. Right, doctor. Okay, sama. Okay. Uh, tadi uh, pelajar tadi, eh, uh, kalau uh, you tanya macam mana you tanya tadi, so saya uh, I would suggest you to use uh, Bessel bandwidth if the beta is stated in the Bessel table, but it is not compulsory. Dia tidak semestinya you, tidak wajib untuk you uh, mendapatkan nilai uh, bandwidth by Bessel unless stated specifically in the question. Okay. Kecuali dia secara spesifik, you perlu cari uh, uh, bandwidth by Bessel as stated in the question, for example. But if the question does not specify anything, you can use Carson even though the beta is stated in the Bessel table. Okay, what I said is that it is uh, recommended, highly recommended for you to use the bandwidth by Bessel if it is all... all if the beta is stated in the table. Okay, maksud saya, sangat uh, digalakkan saya mencadangkan you menggunakan bandwidth by Bessel sekiranya ada dalam table. Okay, sebab dalam table you, dia tidak, uh, dalam table, uh, dalam nota ini, dia tidak lengkap sebenarnya. Eh. Sebenarnya, 
dia ada sebahagian yang dikeluarkan. Uh, if you search in the Google, eh, for example, if you search in the Google, you can find a complete set of a basal table where you can find the value of 0.3 actually. So 0.3 is actually in the in the real table. Eh. Dalam real table sebenarnya ada 0.3 sebenarnya. Kalau kita gunakan table yang besar, so dia ada satu table yang besar, complete set of table, where each value you can find the uh, the number of uh, relative amplitudes. Eh. Uh, but uh, in your syllabus, in this subject, we we use the table in your notes. Kita gunakan table dalam nota untuk memudahkan pelajar. So, uh, kalau ya, kalau ada dalam table, silakan guna uh, bandwidth by vessel. Okay. So, ada question lain nak tanya perkenaan ni? Kalau tak ada, saya proceed. Eh. Okay. So, if you have questions, you can always interrupt me. You can always ask me questions. No problem. So, uh, now we have uh, been in the demodulation process. So, uh, up to this, uh, uh, up to here, we have seen what happened to the uh, up conversions. Okay. And here is the demodulation process in the receiver. Okay. Here is the demodulation uh, process. Uh, sorry, yeah. Okay. So, uh, yang tadi tu kan, which mm -hmm. one uh, for question two? Okay. I mean, mana satu yang, yang I mean, untuk soalan nombor dua, yang menjawab soalan nombor dua. Soalan nombor dua, yang sebelah kanan ni? Uh, yang saya darabkan dengan sepuluh. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, so on the right side. Okay, so, so because I I divide this one over here like this. Eh. Saya, saya bahagikan uh, bahagian ni eh. So the the, cal the calculation on the right side is for the second questions. Okay, sorry, I got confused. Eh? So this is for the first question, and on the right side here is for the second questions using the multiplier. So when we use the multiplier, we multiply with the uh, with the multiplication factor. Dalam case ini, multiplication multiplication factor adalah sepuluh. Okay. So here you see that uh, I find the bandwidth is equal to 80 kilohertz for the multiplication process question number two compared to the bandwidth that we find in the first question which is 26 kilohertz only. Okay, so okay. the right side you, for question number two. Okay, so demodulation process. Okay, remember that um, dalam FM, uh, in FM uh, we are... Actually, uh, remember uh, when we produce the FM signal, uh, the amplitude variation of the input produce the uh, frequency variations delta F at the output. Okay, ini, ini, um, uh, this is the process at the transmitter. Okay, when we produce the FM signal, that means uh, the variation of the input voltage produce the variation of uh, output frequency. So let's say I put here delta, eh? delta Vm, perubahan, eh? the variation of Vm produce variation of frequency. Okay, This is at the transmitter. But at the receiver side, when we want to retrieve the original signal during the mod uh, demodulation process, master process demodulation, we want to produce the original signal. Okay, so in the receiver, uh, in the demodulator at the receiver, we, we do the process of demodulation where we do the reverse process. In the reverse process, actually what we do is that the frequency variations, we need to convert into amplitude variation. Apa yang berlaku adalah, kita perlu buat reverse process. Bermakna, Perubahan frekuensi perlulah menghasilkan perubahan voltage so that we can produce the original signal. So remember that demodulation process, we want to retrieve the original signal. Okay. So you see that here. Um, so, uh, okay, this is uh, VM. 
Okay, Vm, uh, so this is the general equation. So this is just to show the relation, okay, the, uh, the relationship. So this is show that the Vm is proportional to the uh, df over dt. Okay, uh, Vm adalah berkadar langsung dengan perubahan uh, frequency carrier. Manakala, you see that on the right here is uh, input uh, Frequency also, uh, input frequency also directly proportional to the uh, carrier, fre uh, fre carrier frequency deviation. Bermakna, uh, both Vm and Fm are proportional to the carrier frequency deviation. So, Vm and Fm adalah berkadar langsung dengan perubahan uh, carrier frequency. Okay? So, remember that we want, we want to change eh, from... Frequency variation becomes amplitude variation. Sekarang kita nak buat, apa yang kita nak buat adalah kita nak uh, uh, menghasilkan perubahan amplitude disebabkan oleh perubahan frekuensi pada input. Because now we have the FM signal. We want to produce a VMT. So, so we actually have, a, we want to change, we want to change from VFMT kepada VMT. Because we want to find VMT. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, double conversion FM receiver block diagram, also known as the Armstrong receiver. Okay. This is uh, this is among the uh, popular uh, FM receiver type. Okay. Yang biasa di, uh, which is always which is known which is normally used in the practical system, okay, where we use a double conversions. Double conversions means that we down convert the frequency two times. Okay, kita uh, tukar kepada IF sebanyak dua kali. Eh? So, we down, uh, we down convert the frequency uh, into IF for about two times. Remember in AM, okay, if you remember in AM, we do the down conversion to IF, intermediate frequency, once. Sekali, eh? Kalau kamu ingat lagi, eh? Uh, where the, uh, the demodulator down convert the frequency from RF into IF. Uh, and remember, uh, as we learned previously, that the center of IF is at 455 kilohertz. So from a few hundred kilohertz becomes a four or five plus kilohertz, and then we we demodulate into FM frequency, input signal frequency, modulating signal frequency. So it is not when we do the demodulation process, we are not directly from a radio frequency to modulating signal frequency, which is the difference is too big. So what we need to do is we need to make it to in, we need to change it into intermediate frequency first and then we do the demodulation process okay so in fm uh, what uh, in the practical system we have a down conversions uh, double sorry double conversions double conversions here means that we down convert for about two times okay the first down convert is here Okay, and then the second down convert is here. Okay, so what happened is that if if I draw the frequency spectrum, eh, so initially is uh, over here. Okay, initially is over here. This is uh, for example, uh, uh, for example, this is a uh, hundred megahertz, for example. Okay. Uh, actually, we have another uh, frequencies. Okay, we have another frequencies. So what happened is that the first down convert. Okay. Okay, down convert, and then another down convert. Okay. Okay. So. So that's why we have uh, two conversions. Okay, the frequency di dikurangkan sebanyak dua kali. Okay, that's why it is called as a double conversions. So uh, 
in the uh, in the uh, what they call in the standard. Okay, there are a few sets of intermediate frequency, intermediate center frequency. Ada beberapa set of a center frequency. If you remember in AM, we use four by five kilohertz. Okay, this is by standard. Standard center for the IF. Actually, okay, actually, uh, uh, which is not stated in the uh, note, uh, lecture notes, okay, tidak ada dinyatakan dalam lecture notes. If you Google in the, if you search in the Google about intermediate frequency, you're going to see that there are actually a few sets of center IF. Ada beberapa standard untuk standard, uh, center IF which is around 400 something eh, kilohertz okay four something so there are beberapa there is it is not mandatory as 455 some application use 470 something okay some is a uh, four something it is between 400 something okay but in the lecture notes we say that the most common is that we use for am center of if is uh, 455 Okay, similar with frequency modulation, where there is also a few sets of standards for the center of IF. Okay, ada beberapa uh, standard untuk center. Eh? So, if you see that uh, for the first IF center, okay, what is the most common that we use is 10 kilohertz, 10.7 mega, 10.7 uh, megahertz. Center, I mean the center frequency. Okay, the first uh, IF center, IF center. And then the second IF center is at 470 kilohertz. This is the IF center. Okay, so imagine from 100 becomes 10.7 center and then 470 kilohertz. Then we do the demodulation process. We produce the FM, modulating signal frequency, signal yang asal. Okay, so you see that we do the first conversions, second conversions, okay, and then we we do the bandpass uh, bandpass filter to remove the unwanted frequencies, the harmonics, okay, and then we amplify the the signal and then we filter again so there are a few sets of filters that we want to remove the unwanted frequencies okay we want to select only a single uh, we want to select only a single uh, component okay and then we do the demodulation process so this is the demodulation process happens here okay so we have here in the demodulator, limiter here means that we further limit. So limiter, uh, the function of limiter is quite similar with the filter where we limit the, the frequency and also the the, band, uh, the amplitude. Okay, sorry, uh, sorry, the limiter is, sorry, uh, limiter is not a filter. Eh? Limiter is, we limit the amplitude actually. Okay, sorry about that. So limiter means that we limit we limit the peak amplitude that means we cut the peak amplitude color filter if filter we cut the frequencies limiter we limit the amplitudes okay and then we do the demodulation process and then de-emphasis and then we produce the, uh, the output signal okay we produce the output signal which is a vmt okay uh, so for example here is a uh, sign for example so vm sign uh, 2 pi fmt at the output okay so that's the the, the basic concept of uh, uh, receiver in the fm okay fm receiver so what are the types of demodulator so in in your notes uh, we are uh, okay we we, we does not uh, we do not explain uh, everything here where you can learn by yourself, you can learn, uh, you can read by yourself eh, about what what is the process over here. So the process over here is uh, similar what we have learned so far in the AM. Prosesnya hampir sama dengan 
AM eh, kalau you lihat di sini ada pre-selector okay, ada, ada amplifier, we have amplifier uh, the difference is that we on, we have uh, two two uh, two times of down conversions okay and then we have here limiter and so on okay but uh, the process is almost similar like am demodulation prosesnya hampir sama dengan am demodulation so now we want to look uh, what is the demodulator type okay we have many types of demodulator the most basic type is the slope detector okay so slope detector Uh, convert the uh, frequency variation into amplitude variation at the output okay so it is uh, something like am detector actually eh? so it is looks like this okay this is the slope detector so this this slope detector has a transfer function dia ada sifatnya eh? dia punya transfer function characteristic is like this okay center at f O, F O is a F oscillator, okay. And uh, here, what we uh, the the design of the uh, the design of the uh, slope detector is said that the center uh, the center of the I F, okay, which is the second I F, okay. So now remember that uh, after there must. Uh, Before before the signal is inserted into the demodulator, that means we have convert into the second IF. Okay, remember first IF, first intermediate frequency, second intermediate frequency, and then this goes to the uh, demodulator in order to produce the modulating signal frequency. And what happened here is that Uh, the most uh, linear, the most linear in the that's why when we design the slope detector, the most linear uh, of the frequency response here, frequency response curve, that means the center here is the IF center. Bahagian yang paling linear ini, kita boleh setkan dia sebagai uh, center of IF. This is FC of IF. Okay, center of IF. So, that means if the input frequency varies from the IF center to the IF center plus delta F, what happen is that we gonna produce So, yeah, we're going to produce positive output. Kita akan hasilkan positive output. So, uh, wait, eh, saya lukis. So, if the input signal deviates from IF center, okay, from IF center to the maximum um, frequency, so that means we're going to produce, you see that here, we're going to produce Uh, positive output signal. If the input signal frequency varies from IF center to the lower frequency, okay, what happen is that we gonna produce negative side of frequency. Okay, kita akan produce negative side of output. Okay, kita akan hasilkan negative output voltage. Okay. So that means positive, uh, sorry, um, frequency deviation from center to the maximum frequency will produce positive voltage output and frequency deviation from center to the minimum will produce negative output voltage. Uh, so that's the, uh, how they produce the, the output. So uh, it is said that uh, the circuit is designed so that the IF center frequency falls in the center of the most linear portion, as I said previously, of the voltage versus uh, uh, frequency curve, which is a frequency response curve of the uh, slope detector. So when the IF, when the when the input uh, signal eh, here is the IF signal deviates above the FC, 
the voltage increase and produce a this is a positive output voltage and when IF deviates below FC it produce negative voltage okay so apa yang masuk dalam uh, demodulator adalah IF signal intermediate signal frequency okay which is center at 470 remember that uh, as I mentioned previously by uh, by standard it is uh, 470 for the second IF okay so uh, if you if let's say we we make it as 470 over here 470 kilohertz center uh, so since uh, fm signal is uh, varies in frequency so if the frequency variation uh, varies above 470 for example it will produce positive output voltage and if the frequency varies below 470 it will produce negative output voltage okay so therefore the tune circuit converts uh, frequency variation to amplitude variation dia menukar perubahan frekuensi kepada perubahan amplitude okay and you see that it has uh, some disadvantages uh, gain is reduced difficult to achieve uh, linear slope uh, response so this is among the disadvantages of the slope detector and then we have here is a balance uh, the second type of demodulator ini adalah jenis uh, uh, kedua eh, slope detector which is what we call as the balance slope detector. So we, in balance slope detector, actually we have two slope detector. Ada dua sebenarnya. So the above one and the below one. Uh, so above one we have a slope detector and another slope detector below over, here, over there. So in this slope detector, uh, you see that uh, based on the frequency response curve, okay, on the right side here, this is the frequency response curve. So what happened is that uh, at center of IF, okay, let's say this is a IF center, okay, so this is a IF center, which is a, uh, this is a second IF, which is a 470 kilohertz, okay. So if the uh, if the if this input signal deviates above IF center. So it will produce positive output voltage towards uh, FA over here. Okay, so we're going to produce a positive output voltage. And if the frequency deviates below the IF center for 70, that means we're going to produce output negative. Okay, at center it will be at zero. Uh, so different from previously, a uh, center dia tidak zero volt. Eh? So if the if the uh, if the signal at the IF center, it gonna produce a zero output. Okay, dia berada pada zero. So macam mana dia dia berfungsi? How it uh, functions? So that means um, if the input signal frequency deviates above IF center, that means uh, here if you see here the above uh, slope detector will oscillate okay and it will produce a higher uh, voltage compared to the below uh, slope detector and vice versa okay so dia uh, satu, dia akan uh, mempunyai perbezaan voltage antara uh, slope detector yang atas dan bawah yang mana dia akan menghasilkan v out okay and uh, okay so this is uh, okay so i said that uh, this balance uh, detect balance slope detector consists of two slope detector where both of the slope detector are 180 degree out of phase so the two tune circuit perform the fm to am conversion from uh, uh, frequency deviation to amplitude deviation okay sorry frequency variation to amplitude variation at resonant frequency at the if center the resulting output is zero volt so ini kalau dia berada pada if center it will produce zero volt of the output and here as the if deviates above the center frequency the top tune circuit okay tune circuit yang atas akan produce higher voltage compared to the lower tune circuit okay so here uh, the above tune circuit will produce higher voltage compared to the lower tune circuit over here 
Okay, this is the lower and this is the upper given circuit. Okay. And uh, okay. As the IF deviates above the centered frequency, top tune circuit produces higher voltage than the lower tank circuit, and vice versa. So the figure shows the output frequency, okay, the diode recovered the original signal. Okay, advantage is simple, uh, disadvantage poor linearity, difficult tuning, and lack of provisions for limiting. Right. So this is among the advantage and disadvantages. Okay. So the third type of demodulator is the PLL, phase lock loop. Uh, this is among the popular demodulator in FM. Ini antara yang uh, demodulator yang paling popular, which is a PLL. And PLL is still being used until now, until today. Okay, sehingga sekarang, PLL ini masih digunakan eh, dalam uh, practical system. Okay. So, PLL, uh, you see that PLL, uh, what is PLL? PLL is like this. Eh? PLL is a, is a circuit like this. So, we have a few set of block diagram like this. So, we have a phase detector. Uh, so, this is a PLL. So, phase detector, low pass filter, uh, amplifier, and then here we have a VCO. Eh? Okay. So, how do the PLL uh, works? PLL works by comparing the frequency of the VCO, okay? It will compare the frequency of the VCO with the frequency of the input FM. Dia akan sentiasa membuat perbandingan antara frequency oscillator dengan frequency uh, input, iaitu frequency FM. Okay, frequency uh, signal, FM signal, eh? So this, the difference of frequencies produce uh, output voltage VD. Okay, so VD is actually KD multiplied with, uh, ada di sini, eh? so KD multiplied with the delta F. So here actually, what we do here is that we find the, uh, the difference delta F. Okay, so delta F, uh, and then we put inside the phase detector. So what happened is that we produce a output voltage. So VD is actually equal to delta F multiplied with KD. Transfer function of the phase detector. Okay. And then put inside the low pass filter. And then uh, put inside the amplifier where it has a transfer function of KA. So here V out. V out is equal to delta F multiplied with uh, KD. Initially, we have the input is multiplied with KD. And now we have the amplifier transfer function, which is a KA. So we multiply it with KA. This is the output. So the output here goes back to the input of the VCO. And it produces a, a output oscillation frequency. And this will be looped back to the is detector. So, we're going to produce again delta F. Okay. So, remember that this phase detector, it will always always compare the input frequency with the oscillator frequency. Ya, akan setiasa membandingkan. Setiap perubahan, every difference will produce delta F. So, this delta F, when we insert into a phase detector, it's going to produce a, a voltage error. What we call is a voltage area. So, perubahan frekuensi ini mengakibatkan perubahan voltage. It will produce an error voltage or what we call as a VD. So, VD is a, shows the, the difference of the in term of voltage. Okay. So, this is uh, in general how the PLL works. Eh? So, you can, uh, if you want to know more uh, deep about the PLL, you can read the Thomas's book in, if I'm not mistaken, in chapter. Two, eh, dalam uh, Thomas's uh, latest versions, okay. And uh, in PLL, we have uh, three processes. Uh, this is among this is the the favorite questions that have been asked many times in the exam. Okay, <laughs> selalu ditanya. Okay, uh, previously we we never uh, we haven't uh, we never asked about uh, this process. Eh? Kita tidak tanya, kita tidak uh, 
uh, tanya berkenaan dengan equations and so on. Eh. Uh, previously, we never asked about that. Uh, we only ask students to explain about uh, the main process happens in the PLL. Uh, so what I have shown you is uh, what happened to the frequency, what happened to the V out. Okay. So what I have explained previously is about the uh, the frequency deviation produced V out. Okay. So there are there uh, beberapa process di situ eh, sebenarnya. So to simplify the explanation, okay, to simplify the explanation. Actually, uh, the PLL uh, consists of three uh, three uh, operating states. Eh. There are the tiga uh, fasa operasi. Eh. Yang mana the first one is what we call as a free running state. Second is capture state and lock state. Okay. So free running state means that when there is no input signal, only the VCO will oscillate. In that case, kalau you lihat, uh, untuk state yang pertama, eh, uh, what they call is a free running state. Free running state means that there's no input. Okay, there's no FM input. Tidak ada FM input. That means uh, the only input to the phase detector is the oscillator frequency. Okay, tidak ada uh, input FM. So, in that case, uh, we call it as a free running state. Okay, so VCO oscillate at its natural frequency. Okay. So VCO dia, um, dia oscillate pada frekuensi asal dia, dia tidak berubah kerana tidak ada feedback. Okay, you see that if there's no input, that means there's no feedback. Okay, no input means no, uh, there's no, um, in, uh, there's no uh, feedback variation, tidak ada uh, feedback seperti ini. Eh. So this is free running state. And then what? Capture state. Capture state is the process of tuning. We want to tune to the desired frequency. We want to find the desired frequency. Saya ingin mencari frequency yang saya inginkan. Okay. In that case, uh, there must be external input. Akan ada input. Okay. There going to be input signal. But it is not naturally the, the, the frequency that, that we want. Okay. So, so the, the capture state means that we have the input. So once we have the input, the PLL will be at capture state. They are, uh, it is in the process of tuning, of finding the desired frequency. Di dalam proses, dia melakukan proses untuk mencari frequency yang dikehendaki. Okay? Remember when you want to listen to radio, you are actually tuning to your desired uh, radio station. Okay? Uh, so, because we have the input to the antenna, right? We have the input to the antenna. So, you tune the, the radio. You tune the radio. You want to listen to a specific radio stations. So, that means, in this case, the PLL will, uh, will work to find the desired frequency based uh, from the input. Okay? So, it will uh, do the process to find the uh, frequency that we want. And then what? Once we find the, once we find the, the frequency that we want, uh, setelah kita jumpa frekuensi yang kita inginkan, what happen is that it will be at lock state. It will lock at that frequency. Okay, dia akan uh, lock pada frekuensi itu and it will track the frequency variations. Okay, that means when we want to lock, we lock at the center of the, in, uh, we lock at the center frequency. Kita akan lock pada center frequency yang kita inginkan. Okay, once we lock at the center frequency that we want, so the PLL will keep, uh, will keep uh, detecting the changes. Dia akan, dia akan uh, keep on tracking the changes of the frequency. Dia akan keep on tracking the changes. So this is what we call as a lock state. So in lock state, dia akan berfungsi dengan sepenuhnya. Bermaksud, uh, dia akan keep on comparing with the input. Okay, dia akan keep on comparing with the input. 
and here you see you are going to produce a different set of output okay and at lock state we're going to produce a different kind of v out okay different v out okay tadi kita uh, masa kita dalam capture state kita mencari eh we are finding the frequency okay that's the job of oscillator okay we finding the, the input frequency so the output voltage is v out equal to delta f over uh, multiplied with kd ka uh, so this is the um, the output voltage okay and then uh, what i need you boleh baca lah this you can read uh, on your own uh, fm super heterodyne receiver uh, okay, super heterodyne receiver. Okay, okay. This is what I have said before. Uh, some other use a four five five kilohertz. Sorry, this for AM. Eh? So for AM, is this a four five five? As we have learned in the previous uh, slides, uh, in AM chapter. Uh, in FM, this is the first IF. Eh? This is the first IF center. Okay. And this is the basic super heterodyne. Okay, ini adalah basic super heterodyne where it only has, uh, if you see from here, uh, it only has uh, f uh, uh, only one down conversion, eh? one process of down conversion. So you only have a first IF. So here we're going to produce a first IF. Eh? Ini, ini yang uh, basic block diagram. But if you look in the practical cases, we use a double conversion actually. Yeah. So now in practical cases, we in practical system we use a, normally we use a, a double conversions. But here this is a, this is a very general uh, FM super heterodyne receiver. Okay, so the process is almost the same as in the AM demodulator. Okay, Ham, uh, AM receiver hampir sama dengan uh, AM receiver. Okay. Uh, only some differences where we have a limiter, discriminator, and so on. Okay. So here uh, it only use a first uh, one one time of down conversion. So no problem. You want to use a uh, one down conversion, second down conversion. So it doesn't matter depending on the design of the system. Okay, tidak ada masalah. Uh, so this is the function of limiter, discriminator, extract the intelligence from the high frequency carrier and also call the detector. Uh, de-emphasis, we have learned about de-emphasis. Uh, okay, this is... Uh, so, ini you boleh baca sendiri lah. Eh? You boleh baca sendiri. And the comparison. Uh, comparison between uh, FM and PM. Apakah perbezaannya? So, the maximum frequency deviation, delta F, is depend upon the amplitudes of the modulating frequency and um, uh, modulating voltage and modulating frequency. Apa maksud dia? So, delta F is equal to KF uh, VM. Okay. Delta F is equal to KF VM. So, it depends on the amplitude of the modulating voltage. Okay. And the modulating frequency. And then the maximum uh, phase deviations del uh, delta theta is depending upon the uh, ini uh, ini pun saya tak tahu kenapa dia tulis macam ni. So it is actually kf vm. Eh? This is actually uh, delta f is equal to kf vm uh, delta p delta theta is equal to kp vm. Okay. And you see that the frequency of the carrier is modulated by the signal FM, okay? Uh, and then phase of the carrier is modulated by the modulating signal. So this is the different term of carrier and phase. Okay, perbezaan dari segi carrier dan juga, sorry, uh, frequency dan juga fasa. Okay, yang mana dalam FM berlaku, uh, in FM, uh, there are changes the carrier frequency change in PM, the phase of the carrier change according to the input frequency, input signal. Okay, according to the input signal. 
and modulation index is increased as the modulation frequency is reduced and vice versa. So here beta f is equal to uh, delta f over fm or you can say that kp kfvm over fm so uh, the higher the frequency the lower will be beta f okay uh, semakin tinggi frequency input semakin rendah nilai beta f because this is the denominator and you see that beta f is proportional to the vm the higher the vm the higher would be the modulation index and for beta p beta p if you remember this is equal to uh, kp vm okay it is independent of the input frequency okay? tidak bergantung kepada input frequency so beta p only depending on the uh, input voltage okay so this is the explanation okay so this explanation is um, represented in term of graph if you see here uh, m here is the beta okay the value of beta so the value of beta is proportional to the value of voltage input voltage as i mentioned previously so both beta beta p beta f both uh, are proportional to the input voltage okay which is this one the higher the voltage input voltage the higher would be the modulation index okay and then uh, if you see uh, again beta modulation index uh, versus input frequency what happened okay so you see that in fm the higher the input frequency the lower would be the modulation index ha, ini macam tadi dalam equation ini eh these equations but for the phase modulation uh, the beta is independent of the input frequency okay so it is remains the same although the the frequency increase the uh, beta f uh, beta p is still the same okay tidak ada perubahan and uh, delta theta versus vm so the higher the vm uh, you see that uh, theta uh, sorry, this is delta theta is equal to kp vm. So, it is proportional to the v, uh, vm. Dia berkadar langsung dengan vm. And then delta f, you see that delta f is equal to kf vm. So, it is proportional to the uh, input voltage. Okay. Uh, so, this is our several advantages over AM okay compare in comparison uh, FM over AM eh? so advantages of FM compared to AM uh, it is uh, noise reduction less noise improve system fidelity so fidelity is uh, is related to the multiple uh, attenuation uh, multiple attenuations berlakunya uh, attenuation banyak kali so when we transmit the signal from um, from the transmitter to the receiver, the signal will attenuate. So the when the signal uh, uh, collide with obstacles or maybe due to the distance, uh, it will attenuate. Okay, the amplitude becomes smaller. So this attenuation, attenuation, attenuation produce a, what we call as a fidelity. Oh, sorry. So, this is a... Uh, okay, yeah, betul. So, that means uh, in, in term of uh, uh, the amplitude of the signal becomes better. That means uh, uh, we can... Uh, the, the, the signal is uh, is not... Uh, the FM signal uh, is not... Uh, sorry, the, the amplitude of the signal does not uh, changes uh, rapidly. Uh, due to the uh, fidelity of this. So, that mak maknanya dia tidak ada, uh, perubahan amplitude itu tidak uh, tidak ketara eh, berba uh, kerana dia berlaku perubahan because it, uh, because it produce uh, um, uh, frequency changes only. Okay, dia berlakunya sebab FM ini dia uh, mengalami proses uh, 
perubahan frekuensi yang mana dia punya amplitude uh, remains the same. Eh. Uh, in all frequencies, we still use the uh, same amplitude of the carrier. So it doesn't change the amplitude of the carrier. So only the, the frequency change. So in this case, uh, we will produce at the, in, uh, at the receiver side, uh, the, the amplitude is uh, much better compared to the AM. Okay, this is one we compare to the AM. That is, uh, compared, berbanding dengan AM, dia sangat susceptible. Dia sangat, uh, uh, the AM signal much prone to the uh, attenuation process. Because attenuation will attenuate the, the amplitudes. Okay. So, if the amplitudes uh, is affected in the AM, they are can, uh, it will produce a very bad quality at the output. Okay? Whereas for FM, although the amplitude is uh, changes due to the attenuations, but it is not really affected the, system, uh, the signal quality because we want to see the frequency changes. Kita ingin melihat perubahan frekuensi. Okay, kerana attenuation ini mengganggu amplitudes. Dia akan mengubah suai amplitudes disebabkan uh, attenuation mengubah, uh, mengurangkan amplitudes. So, ini tidak be, tidak begitu effect. It will not really affect the quality of the signal because we want to extract the frequency and we want to track the frequency changes, not the amplitudes. So, that's why it is more better uh, in FM compared to AM. And then, uh, in terms of power, uh, more efficient use of power, okay, depending on the system, depending on the design, okay. Advantage of uh, disadvantage, wider bandwidth, more complex circuit, okay. So, the bandwidth is more than 2FM, uh, wider bandwidth. So, uh, wider bandwidth doesn't necessarily mean disadvantage. Tidak semestinya... Uh, bandwidth yang besar ini adalah disadvantage. Actually, wider bandwidth uh, will produce a higher data rate. Which is in some application, which is good. Okay, some application, wider bandwidth is good. Uh, so, why it is called, uh, why it is uh, mentioned as a uh, disadvantage? Because we relate with the noise power. Remember noise power? Noise power, sorry, noise power is equal to KTB. That means uh, what, what we mean here is that the higher the bandwidth, uh, the higher will be the noise power. So that's why it is uh, put inside the disadvantage. Uh, but we need to look at different perspective also that uh, wider bandwidth also has advantages where we can achieve higher data rate. So, if we want to uh, uh, reduce the noise, we need to have a very good filter, filtering process. Okay. And it is more complex circuit. Eh? So, the circuit is more complex. Uh, so, that's the about uh, FM. Okay. So, the hub is... Eh? So, I'd um, like uh, scale. Maybe say not... Teruskan sedikit saja lagi ya, untuk chapter 4. Mungkin kita boleh start dengan opening chapter 4. Uh, sorry guys, uh, saya akan gunakan sepenuhnya masa. Eh. Okay. Uh, after this, I will uh, go to the attendance. Eh. So, I just want to explain just a little bit. Okay. Sikit saja. Uh, chapter 4. So, after this, uh, next week we will begin with chapter 4. Chapter 4 is uh, digital modulation and transmission. So remember in chapter 3, we learn about analog. Okay, where we, um, that means uh, the system receive analog signal, produce analog output. That's in chapter 3. In chapter 4, okay, we have the options to receive, uh, we have the options, either we want to have a, a digital input, okay, digital input, Produce digital output, or you want to produce analog output. You have the options, okay? And 
we can also have analog input and we can produce uh, digital output or analog output that's the that's the beauty of a digital communication system where we have the flexibility to produce the output kita ada flexibility in this case okay and uh, among the advantages of a digital system is that it is noise immunity in digital system it's not necessary to evaluate the precise amplitude frequency of phase remember in digital system Okay, if we use a digital, that means we process the, uh, the signal into two phases. Okay, normally into two states only. Eh? Uh, state 1, logic 1, logic 0, logic 1, logic 0, logic 1, logic 0. So, we treat all signal uh, with, uh, because we, we, in digital system, we see all signal has uh, two, uh, diff uh, has a similarity of two different states, one and zero only. Logic one, logic zero only. Only two possibility. Regardless of any input, eh, any input, kita akan nampak dia sebagai logic one, logic zero. Compared to the analog, analog we have infinite shape. Okay, analog we have infinite shape, which is difficult to process the signal. Okay, compared to the digital, because uh, everything is looks like uh, logic one, logic zero, logic one, so easy for us to do the process. And in that case, uh, it said that here that um, uh, the amplitude is not uh, it's not uh, really important here because we we assume the signal to have uh, two states, uh, logic one and logic zero. So regardless of the noise, uh, we can do the filtering process uh, later because here the, the noise is not depending on the amplitude voltage. It is depending on the, uh, later we're going to see about uh, SQR. Uh, we, we also have the SNR, uh, we also have the kind of SNR calculation in the digital communications. Okay, we're going to see that later. So uh, noise immunity. And then multiplexing. Uh, multi so since uh, all input signal, so all signal has a uh, two states only, logic one, logic zero. That means we can combine it. Okay, we can combine. We can do multiplexing. We can transmit the signals together. If we have a uh, ten inputs, a hundred input signal, we can multiplex together, and then we can. Okay, so easy to multiplex because all signal is uh, has a same uh, state 1010 zero, zero. semua jenis signal adalah mempunyai state 10 1010 of logic state signal regeneration that's among the best thing about a uh, digital system is that uh, we can regenerate the signal so that means we can send the signal further away lebih jauh okay, dal untuk digital system kita boleh menghantar signal pada jarak yang lebih jauh because we can regenerate the signal. Regeneration is different from amplification. Uh, in analog, we can only do amplification. We cannot do regenerate. We cannot do regeneration in the analog. Okay, regeneration means we regenerate the signal again. Kita hidupkan semula signal tersebut. Eh? Dia berbeza dengan amplifications. Okay, so if we can regenerate the signal between the transmitter and receiver, eh? between transmitter and receiver, we're going to have a few set of repeater. So regeneration is done by the repeater. We regenerate the signal so that we can transmit at longer distance. And then the, the advantage is the error corrections, better error corrections. So we can reduce, actually we can reduce the a bit error rate we can reduce the error okay for the signal transmitted from uh, from transmitter to the receiver so kita boleh melakukan process error correction dengan lebih baik that means we can uh, achieve a better quality of the received signal less error okay disadvantages a higher bandwidth uh, complex circuit needs precise synchronization in terms of time and incompatible with all the transmission technology. So this is for the very old transmission technology. So itu saja yang saya nak terangkan. Eh. So this is the block diagram yang saya akan jelaskan pada minggu hadapan. Eh. Okay.
So uh, that's all for today. So now we can um, do the attendance. Okay, kita boleh buat attendance sekarang. So you can open your QR code reader. So kita boleh scan. We can scan the attendance. So sorry. So if you have scanned your attendance, you can uh, you can exit the class and you can go to another class. Okay. If you have question, you can ask me question for now. No problem. Kalau ada soalan boleh tanya. Kalau yang dah ambil attendance boleh keluar, eh? boleh pergi ke kelas lain. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Thank you, doctor. 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 Welcome. Doktor, yeah? boleh tolong pick untuk saya? Saya, saya pakai phone. Ah, nama siapa? Ahmad Kamil Haikal. Ahmad Kamil Haikal, okay. Thank you, Doktor. Yang lain sudah eh? Ada students? Semua dah ambil attendance? Thank you, Doktor. Okay, welcome. Okay, welcome. Doktor, saya tak boleh nak scan. Okay, nama siapa? Muhammad Syahrul. Muhammad Syahrul. Syahrul Amizan. Ah, saya Amizan, doktor. Okay. Doktor, ya, Syahrul. Siapa nama? Syahrul. Tak dengar? Sharma, Sharma. Sharma. Okay, Sharma. Okay, dan? Uh, doktor, saya tak boleh nak scan. Siapa nama? Uh, Zulhelmi. Saya, Doktor. Zulhelmi. Siapa nama Zulhelmi? Oh, Muhammad Zulhelmi. 25. Okay. 31, Doktor. Terima kasih, Doktor. Siapa lagi? 31. Adli, ya? Okay. Okay. Siapa lagi? Semua dah ambil attendance? Ada lagi yang belum ambil attendance? Oh, tak ada. Saya tutup eh. So, three, two, one. Okay. So, that's all for now. Thank you. So, see you again next week. Okay. Bye-bye.